What's up, everyone? Back for another beer review, and today is Wednesday, which of course means it's time for another West New York Wednesday here on the channel. And today I am reviewing two beers from the Brickyard Brewing Company, and they're out of Lewiston, New York. And this is their number 72, and this is their Mama's Cookies. So number 72 is a West Coast style IPA that comes in at 7.2% alcohol by volume and 72 IBUs. Meanwhile, Mama's Cookies is a sugar cookie IPA that comes in at 6.6% .6 alcohol by volume and no IBUs. Listen, time of review, both of these cans are approximately three and a half weeks old. So these beers are essentially a tribute to the National Hockey League's Buffalo Sabres, which I am obviously a fan of. And uh, they wanted to um, release a couple beers that pay homage to a couple different members of the organization. Number 72 is a tribute to Tage Thompson, one of uh, Buffalo's best players uh, currently. Um, and in general, I would say. Uh, so yeah, they went with a West Coast IPA. And then Mama's Cookies is a beer that pays homage to the Buffalo Sabres a longtime play-by-play -play announcer, Rick Jennerette, who unfortunately passed away this past August. And one of his play-by-play um, -play calls was Top Shelf, where a mama hides the cookies, hence Mama's Cookies. So this beer over here, number 72, they say on the side, is uh, brewed for those with uh, explosive talent. This West Coast IP is dry hopped with Eldorado, Amarillo, and Chinook hops. Here's to number 72 on the ice and number one in our hearts. So number 72 is the uh, number four, uh, Tage Thompson. And then over here, Mama's Cookies, they say uh, brewed using lactose, sugar cookies, and vanilla with Sabro and Brew One hops. This one's for RJ. And, you know, Rick Jennerette, probably the, as far as like a member of the organization within the Sabres go, probably the most beloved member of the Sabres organization that wasn't an, uh, an actual player. Um, you know, most Sabres fans I know loved Rick Jennerette, loved his play-by-play uh, -play style, and uh, I was one of those people. And it's uh, just very sad that he's no longer with us, but I am happy to review these two, compare them, see which one I uh, enjoy more. So we are going to pour them. Um, Resurgence did something similar to this last year where they reviewed, or they reviewed, I reviewed, uh, Two different beers from them that uh, paid tribute uh, paid tribute to uh, Ryan Miller, uh, one of the best goaltenders in uh, Sabres history. After Dominic Hasek, they were um, uh, I just said Dominic Hasek, yeah, Dominic Hasek, uh, because um, he was having his number retired. I think it was back in like the middle of January of last year. So we're gonna do something like that. I want to be able to get my nose in there. We'll throw this over here, and um, it was fun. They did a, a Pilsner and a Hazy IPA, and uh, yeah, they were both pretty good. I enjoyed the Hazy IPA quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that was a cool ceremony and everything they did. Now, the Sabres are terrible again this year for some reason. Missed the playoffs last year by one point, and their power play is absolute trash this year, and uh, they are just not playing well, and it is a bummer because, you know, being a Sabres fan, it is what it is. You're used to it. Anyway, love the cans here. Probably going to try and save them. We'll see. Uh, but I'd like to put them behind me on the pretentious wall of uh, bottles and cans. So, yeah, that is clear beer. That is a uh, West Coast IPA. You can see my hand through. It has this nice, like rust color to it, like this deep, dark, honey orange color. Uh, has about a half finger of an off-white, almost lightly tan colored head. Um, you know, a little bit of legs on the side at 7.2%, hold it up to the light. Yeah, you can definitely see through that beer. I say that plays the role for a West Coast style IPA. Now a sugar cookie IPA, never had one of those, had all kinds of different, uh, you know, I would say pastry IPAs, sugar cookies, not one of them. So yeah, that has that looks like a hazy. I can see the shadow of my hand through it, but not, you know, so it's not super murky and turbid, but it's, uh, you know, it has enough uh, a murk to it that I'd say it's hazy. Almost a finger of an off-white eggshell, white, I'd say, colored head, pretty creamy looking. A um, little bit of alcohol, he's not much. Hold it up to the light, and yeah, you can see a little bit more. The shadow is a little bit more pronounced. All right, let's get a nose here on the West Coast. Yeah, so this, to me... Now they're using uh, Eldorado, uh, Amarillo, and Chinook. This definitely has old school West Coast IPA vibes. So this is not like one of your new school West Coast IPAs. There's a lot of a lot of pine on the nose. There's big citrus, orange, white grapefruit. Yeah, almost blood orange from that Amarillo. I'd say the only thing they're kind of bringing to the table here in the aroma that's a I'd say a little bit more of a new school West Coast IPA. I get a touch of like a, a melon, like almost a watermelon, honeydew, something a bit sweeter. There's a little bit of like a bready, almost caramel malt uh, aroma as well. 
Yeah, smells like a pretty solid West Coast IPA. Let's get a nose on the sugar cookie IPA. Wow, that smells like a fucking... Smells like the frosting on a sugar cookie, 100%. Big vanilla from the lactose, it's adding to the vanilla, and it's giving you, like, I don't know, there's a little bit of a doughiness in here. Like, almost like an undercooked sugar cookie, like a softer one, like way softer. Wow, yeah, so vanilla for sure. Again, frosting, doughy, bready. There's a little bit of like a uh, slight coconut, probably from the Sabro. Yeah, like there's almost like toasted coconut sprinkled on top of a sugar cookie. Does this have any IPA characteristics? Not really. Maybe there's like a nondescript, like earthy grassiness going on. Slight dankness. But for the most part, it just smells like kind of like a sweet sugar cookie ale, not an IPA. So it doesn't smell bad. I love sugar cookies, but I'm curious about that one. This one smells more authentic to the style. So let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, that's pretty much like a by-the-book West Coast IPA. I'd say maybe not as bitter and like heavy on like the, the resinous pine, but... It's pretty much there. After that first sip, like I said that, and now the, the bitterness is kind of building a bit. 7.2% higher side of medium body, really nice body. Mouthfeel, it's crisp, it's cl um, relatively clean on the palate, very effervescent. You know, it's it's uh, it's moderately carbonated, so it is spritzy on the palate. And the taste, again, a by the book kind of West Coast IPA. Up front, it's bready, a little bit of caramel. After that, it's orange, it's white grapefruit. It's not super juicy. It just has more of like an orange zest um, or like an orange, um, like the oil. A uh, little bit of like a uh, slightly like bittering white grapefruit, like the rind. Passes through, midway through the palate, I get like a touch of, um, I want to say watermelon. El Dorado used to give me watermelon back in the day. I don't get as much anymore. But it has this like distinct like melon character. Somewhere between like a watermelon and a honeydew, not quite a cantaloupe. But that's nice. So a lot of like old school West Coast IPAs, you would get like the citrus and then maybe like a pop of pineapple or something. This has more of like a melon kind of uh, note. And on the finish, this finish is semi to full on dry with a approaching moderate bitterness. So yeah, I'd say it has a firm moderate bitterness as I'm drinking on this one. So it's pretty well balanced. Each sip, the bitterness is building. So yeah, I would say it has a firm, uh, moderate bitterness. Here's the thing. This is 7.2% and it drinks more like, I mean, if someone told me outside the body, if this was like a, you know, five and a half percent West Coast Palo or something, I'd be like, yeah, no, for sure. The flavors are not like in your face, but they're nice. It's, so this is just a well-made West Coast IPA. Hides the alcohol uh, quite well. The body is a little bit bigger, even at 7.2%. But I don't think it's going to blow you over with flavor. But I think, I want, here's the thing. I think this is like an approachable West Coast IPA. For somebody maybe that's just starting to get into like old school IPAs, I think you'd be okay with this. I don't think the bitterness and the dryness would be too much. I don't think um, like a hazy lover would absolutely, you know, go nuts for this one. But I think for what it is, it's pretty fucking, it's pretty solid, pretty good. I enjoy it. So we'll rate that in a second. Let me uh, cleanse my palate and we'll get into the uh, sugar cookie. All right, so let's get into this one. Cheers, everyone. So, tasting, and what did they say they brewed it with? It was said lactose, sugar cookies, and vanilla. So they're actually brewing with sugar cookies. To me, yes, they are. And, and, it, and it works pretty well. Here's the thing. Let me go back for another sip. I'm not getting like a distinct IPA note. It's nice though. So right up front, nice body, the lactose, bumping up the body and mouthfeel. I'd say body, 6.6%, very comparable to this, like medium touch over uh, medium body, higher side of medium body. So, you know, over a half percent less and still a very comparable body. The mouthfeel, it's softer, it's smoother. It has a little bit of creaminess going on, again, from the lactose. But the taste. All right, so I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more of the IPA. 
But front to back, there is a distinct sugar cookie. And it's everything from the sugar cookie. It's not just like the base cookie itself. It's the frosting. So you get that vanilla kind of frosting. Um, there's a, if you had ever had like a sugar cookie with like maybe a, a toasted coconut on it, which I don't, I probably, I'm trying to think. If I had a sugar cookie with toasted, picture a sugar cookie with toasted coconut on it. That's kind of what I'm getting here. You get right from the doughy, kind of bready, kind of sweeter cookie part of it. And then throughout the palate, the vanilla and that toasted coconut kind of hits. And again, that toasted coconut is not an actual ingredient. It's coming from the Sabro. There's underlying like citrus notes, like there's orange, maybe a little bit of tangerine, uh, ruby red grapefruit, definitely citrus heavy. And that's probably coming from the IPA. On the finish, there is a semi-dry kind of finish and there's a mild bitterness. So the one thing that going into this one I knew is that this was going to be sweeter than this. Like just, you know, common sense would dictate. This is not cloying. This is not over the top. I just think that if I was doing this blind, would I be able to call this like a sugar cookie IPA that's essentially like a um, milkshake IPA? Probably not. And they just said generic ale or like you know, sugar cookie ale or something. I think I'd be okay with it. Um, and these are, you know, relatively fresh, three and a half weeks old. What's my preference between the two? I don't know. Hmm. All right, so this is what I would say. Well, there's a little bit more dankness now after coming back and cleansing my palate and everything. Has a little bit of like a, a dank funkiness going on here. This is what I was saying for these two beers. It would depend on your mood. I can't really, I don't think I can really choose which one I enjoy more just because they're two completely different beers despite both being IPAs. This is more if I was just in the mood for a classic West Coast IPA, I would grab this. Um, again, I wish I, there's a little bit more flavor from this in general, but I think it's pretty well done for what it is. So I do enjoy it. Shout out to the train. Wouldn't be a beer patrol review without the train. Over here is if I wanted a pastry or a milkshake IPA and I wanted something that, you know, invokes the holiday spirit, you're getting a sugar cookie IPA, sure. I, I would totally grab this one, even though like the IPA portion isn't as pronounced as I would like it to be. As a whole, I think these are both pretty good beers and I enjoy both of them equally, I think, in different ways. So number 72 and Mama's Cookies from Brickyard. And this is for <laughs> the thumbnail and I'm sure it's going to be terrible. But uh, yeah, this uh, these two beers, I'm going to give them a low four out of five and go 3.9. I think that's where they land. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to give them both a uh, three, nine. I think that's fair. And then just for, just so you can see the label a little better for each one. I mean, very simplistic, but I dig it. Honestly, I think it's a, I think they're going to go behind me on the pretentious wall of bottles and cans and the RJ. I actually have went to the, uh, the RJ like banner ceremony a couple years ago and it was great. I got a banner from him and it was, you know, for the night. It's fantastic. So, um, now we have to do the cuvee, and I'll talk about price and availability as I do that. Price point on the number 72, I paid $349 for this can. Something like that. I paid uh, three, $349 for this can, and uh, I paid $399 for this can. So $14 a four-pack, $16 a four-pack. Kind of makes sense. You have, you know, lactose, sugar, cookies, and vanilla in this. You just have a West Coast IPA. So, yeah, we're doing the cuvee. Um... That kind of looks like, you know, like a, uh, a hazy West Coast IPA. That's what it looks like. Uh, almost a finger of it. Again, eggshell white colored head. Pretty creamy looking, murky. Not super, you know, murky and turbid. Kind of has like an old school, like, I don't know, like an old school, um, like maybe like Vermont IPA kind of color. Also, availability, uh, Brickyard here in Western New York. You can find them at different... Uh, you know, breweries or different um, bottle shops at their brewery. I don't think they really make it outside the area. So you got to be in Western York to uh, grab their stuff. Nose. All right. So the sugar cookies a little bit more pronounced, but honestly, I think this smells like I was hoping this would smell because you're getting half and half that. Yeah, you get the sugar cookie, but now I'm getting more of an IPA scent. There's again more citrus, a little bit of that melon, but then you're getting the vanilla and the sugar cookie over top of it. T touch of like pine and dankness. It smells pretty good. Maybe better than each of them on their own. Anyway, cheers. I think that's really good. The Cove, the Cove, 
I think it's better than both of them. Body is very similar, higher side to medium. It has more of a smooth, kind of creamier sensation, a little bit softer on the palate like the sugar cookie, uh, the mama's cookies. And um, the taste, again, it's like this beer, but if underlying there was an actual IPA characteristic that had more, again, citrus, orange, white grapefruit, a little bit of that melon from this. And then on the finish, it has a like mild to moderate bitterness, semi to full on dry finish, and a little bit of that like pine resin dank kind of quality. Mm. Now this one's better than either of them. Not like substantially, but kind of more my wheelhouse. I'd actually give the cuvee, I'd give that like a high four, low four, two, five, like 4.15. I think that it's better than both. Um, if you uh, grab these and uh, you have a little bit at the end of, uh, let's say you drank them side by side like I did, definitely mix them. You know, do the cuvee, do the cuvee. See what you think about it. I, I think these, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, good cuvee. So if you've had either of these beers before, post in comment section. Again, you're going to have to be from the Western New York area. And if you're not from the Western New York area, which one do you think you'd prefer trying? Would it be uh, the you know the RJ uh, you know Mama's Cookies, or would it be the Tage Thompson Number Seventy Two West Coast Style IPA? I think if I had to choose one, I don't. I, it's too tough. I'd probably go with the RJ one just because RJ. Uh, that, that that would be my final answer, but. I would actually grab a can and just do the cuvee because I think that's where it's at. So I appreciate everybody stopping by for a, another West New York Wednesday. Um, these are always fun. The, the side-by-sides, really cool for them to uh, release both of these beers. Now check back next Wednesday. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I do have a can of Flying Bison's uh, Blizzard Bach, which I have not reviewed on the channel. I've had that beer a couple times before. Really good box, especially for an American brewery. So I might review that one because it's a little bit different. And I haven't had a beer from Flying Bison in over a year. So I need to uh, review some of their stuff. So I'll probably review that next week. Anyway, I appreciate everybody stopping by for a, another West New York Wednesday. Till the next one. Cheers.